Welcome to this tutorial on graphical user interfaces or just GUI with Python. In this tutorial I will use the Jupyter Notebook called b11-gui.ipanb that you can find in the course repository. I will assume in this tutorial that you have a basic understanding of how functions and in particular then classes and their methods work in Python. For this tutorial I will work with the tkinter library in Python. Sometimes even though it should be installed basically in your Python environment it might be missing anyway. So just to test if it lives on your computer you can on Windows at least fire up anaconda prompt. Um, let's make that a little bit bigger here. And just tap here python minus m t kinter and that should open a little window um, if it works. Yes. So that is basically also already your first graphical user interface. Quite useless because it's not personalized at all. So why would you use something like a graphical user interface at all? Well, having these Python codes with that black background on that blinking cursor maybe somewhere is nice if you know how to deal with it but can scare off some other people who you want to work with your codes. You can simplify their work or also your work later on with your code when you provide something that tweaks into your code with a very con in a very convenient way. And graphical user interfaces are one of these convenient ways where you can just um, guide intuitively through a workflow, for example. Still, I personally believe that uh, tkinter and graphical user interfaces are going to be step by step replaced by web applications, also um, with Python applications. Anyway, this way of creating graphical user interfaces is a well-established way that um, helps and simplifies um, on a basic level. So let's have a look here at how you can create a graphical user interface that is a little bit more personalized um, for your purposes. Well, the very first step for having a graphical user interface and working with tkinter is, of course, to import the library. Typically, you import uh, tkinter with the alias tk, so import tkinter as tk. Then you would initialize a top window, so that happens with the tk.tk, .tk. so you're instantiating here an object of uh, tkinter's tk class. Then you can add a label to that window, and the very first thing that you need to do for getting that label is here to instantiate a label object. So by writing tk.label um, here you attach it to the top window and then you just give it here a text um, name. Just here keep in mind for um, uh, convenience with the uh, style guides there shouldn't be white spaces here. Finally you also need to place your label somewhere in your um, window. So here you know it's attached now, or Python knows it's attached to the top window, but it doesn't know where to place it. And here that label.pack uh, method is one option to place your label now in the window. Later on I will still show you some other functions or methods that you can use to place your label or other widgets in a tkinter window. Now to show your uh, graphical user interface, you will need to activate here the main loop. Once you call the main loop, your window will open and it is in a wait state. When it's in this waiting state, it will actually wait for user action to do something. That is called then event-driven programming that has some event handlers that will do something. So if you run now this little code block, we get here this tiny little window with just some text. 
there is no real trigger here, so there is no event handler here that we could use to trigger something. Our first graphical user interface now had a label, no title and opened up in a very tiny window. To change that by default, we can set some variables for that graphical user interface. Um, for instance, with the title, min size, max size and configure attributes of the top or parent window. The way how we do that is that we refer here to the instance of the TK class, so the top window. We use its title attribute or here the function to set a title. That would be here our title, my first graphical user interface app or however you want to um, call that. Then I'm setting here a min size. This minimum size is in pixel values. So that will give the window a size of 628 times 382 pixels. Then I'm using here the dot configure command to set the BG background color to sky blue. There are many, many other colors available here and you can also use other uh, option keyword arguments here of the configure uh, method to assign, for instance, a foreground color. So guess what that's going to be, FG. Um, well, and then after that configuration, I still need to call again my window or to make my window running. So putting it in that waiting state with the top dot main loop method. So let's run that code block and here's now our window. You see it's much larger. We have now also that sky blue background and we have the title that is my first GUI app. Our sky blue, a little bit larger window now, had some style options implemented. Still, there wasn't anything callable. So our window was still in the waiting state without anything that could be triggered. So now let's add something where we can trigger a function or a code that we wrote. One of the most basic options for doing that is to implement a button. A button will be an instance of the tk.button class. In this example here, I will use a button to call a show info box. So the show info box is something that is uh, available through tkinter already. So that's a predefined little pop-up window um, that holds a message. To uh, have that available here in our code block, I am importing it here from tkinter.messagebox. There are other message boxes like ask, okay, cancel, guess what the options of such a pop-up window would be or ask yes, no. Then I am defining here now a callback function. So that should be the response to my button. And in that callback function, I am um, opening, I'm, I'm using now that show info box. That show info function here takes two required um, arguments. One is, this is the info box, so that would be here my uh, info box title. And the other one is the message that I want to pass to the box. Here I am using the message as an input argument of my function. So let's implement the button in the graphical user interface. Here that is everything like you have it already seen, instantiating the TK object, then adding a label somewhere. This time I'm calling the label, I'm giving the label a text that's called here as a button. Um, and now I'm instantiating here a button object. So an instance of the button class from TK or tkinter. I'm attaching that again here to the top window. Um, I can assign a text, so that's the text here that's going to be on the button. And now I'm defining here the keyword argument command. 
and that is now the function where my window or where, where, that my button should call when I'm clicking on it. So there is one challenge here. If I would directly write here uh, my callback function or give my callback function as an argument, what would happen then is as soon as I, if I'm calling here the main loop of my top window, it will trigger everything that's here in the commands. So to avoid that my callback function is immediately triggered upon calling here the main loop method of the top window, I need to add here a lambda function. So lambda functions is something that I explained along with the functions tutorial. So it's just here one uh, li uh, a one line built in function that in this case avoids that my callback function is called at the moment that I call the main loop function. So before I call now the main loop, I will pack the button just again to um, in the window. Um, I will let tkinter decide where it packs it, so no specification here, and it will just be packed uh, below the label. So now if I run that window, here I get my, here's the button window. It's still again very tiny because I didn't add any graphical configuration here to it. So I click here now, and then I'm getting here greetings from the button. So just try now if I would remove here the lambda function, then this info box is immediately called. So that's not what we want. So this is why we want to have here the lambda function. When you're writing now a graphical user interface, what you typically want to achieve with that is that a user just needs to call your Python script and then the graphical user interface pops up. This is why uh, an application or a TK a graphical user interface is mostly written as a class or typically written as a class. So here now, why it is important that you get a basic understanding of what are classes in Python. So to write a, an application class here in Python, I will use here in that code block a class that I call vanilla app. So vanilla application and that class inherits from tk.frame. Then in its initialization window here, I am uh, giving here the master keyword, the uh, a none value. And then I am initiating here the tk.frame class. So just recall that will make available all methods and attributes of the tk.frame class to my vanilla app class. The next thing that I need to write in here is self.pack, so to instantiate here my window. And then I am just adding here again a label, so that's very similar to what we have seen so far. Um, I'm giving the label a text. Um, the only difference here now is that I'm attaching it here to the master window. Just note that this notation here of uh, master for anything in programming is or was very popular for a long time because it's somehow re, um, very descriptive because you've got something that gives commands to everything else. Um, but that's not um, what modern programming would use in terms of terminology. So you could have rather a main window and then sub windows that follow this. So we have here now that tk.label that is now attached to that master window. Then I'm attaching here again a button and I'm giving here, assigning again a command here with a lambda function to the button. Um, and I am referring here now the callback function that I implemented now in the class here. So I call it uh, here uh, callback function. It's again this info box or that show info thing that we've seen before. I am also adding here another button um, with another text. 
So again, here let's make that uh, style conform. And I'm calling again here my callback function and giving uh, just giving it here another input argument. So now I have my class defined and now to make that script uh, or doing something useful, I need to implement here that standalone statement here that is if name equals main, then start the main loop of my vanilla app. So if I run that window now, I get again a very tiny window. So you might even not see it if your screen is very big. Um, and then you've got here these two buttons and you can click here, I want vanilla. Hmm. That is the one here that gives me that callback. And then I want something else. Okay. So now there's something hidden here in that code block. Here, that only works because I defined the callback function before here. So this code block here is actually now still referring to the callback function from here. So now coming back to the tutorial classes, what would I need to do so that this callback function calls to this callback function rather than this callback functions? So just take your time for a minute, stop maybe the window and think about what you can do for that. callback because that now gives the notion of the class object here to, um, of its self dot callback class. So if I'm running that window now, it will open up again, but this time it is referring here to my callback function in the class. Now I mentioned we want to make that a script maybe running standalone. For this purpose, I prepared already something in the course repository. So you will find here in the GUI folder a script um, that is called start underscore GUI. And that basically contains everything that you see below here. So there you see that's a very long script. And that creates something like this window. And this window here features a bunch of other widgets that you have not seen so far. So you know the label, you know the button and all others. We're going to look at them in just a couple of seconds. Before we get there, let's just call that script. So let's go back here to our terminal and uh, find that script. So for me, that lives here in my uh, Jupyter um, directory or Jupyter folder and then in the uh, course repository and here in, uh, the, um, in the GUI folder. So now just uh, check here what's in the GUI folder. You can see that in, on Windows um, with, uh, by just writing dir, dir. And if you're on uh, Linux, you could just uh, write uh, ls to see what's in that directory. That uh, cd change directory thing is still the same on Linux or Windows. On Mac, I don't know, probably the same. So now you see here is the start uh, underscore uh, gui.py. And now to open that window here or that Python script in as a standalone script, I will just type it Python and then uh, start uh, the gui underscore at the start underscore GUI dot py. So I hit enter and here now is my window live and I can uh, work with the widgets that I added here. So the widgets here, as I mentioned, you have seen the label, you have seen the button. The other entries that are featured here are an entry. So that is this box over here. In that entry, I can just uh, type something. What you also see here is now a TTK combo box. So what's that now? Well, a TTK is a sub library here from Tkinter, so we need to import that in addition. 
the combo box is that kind of uh, drop down element here in the window from which we can choose elements now. So these elements here are defined in my combo box like that here. So that here is the instantiation of my combo box entry. I'm assigning it here default width of uh, 20. Then I'm placing it now here with the dot grid command. The same here holds for the label and the button and the entry already. Um, the dot grid command here replaces the uh, self dot pack window, uh, sorry, uh, method. And what I'm doing here with, uh, or what I'm required to do with the grid command is I'm placing it along a grid that consists of cullen and rows. So I place the label and the button and the entry and now also the combo box, as you can see here, in cullen number zero. And the label was in row number zero, the um, button in row number one and so on. So the entry in row number two and my combo box now is in row number three. So that's this year. I also use here um, a padding around these elements. Um, this padding can have just a value like you would write five or ten pixels, something like that. Um, here I'm using just a constant that I defined before here with uh, self dx, so padding in x direction and uh, self dot dy, padding in y direction. And then I'm assigning that here basically to all the widgets. Okay, let's go back here to the combo box. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm assigning a state that is read only, so a user cannot modify it. These here are the entries or values that you can see here in the combo box. So this is what you get, what you can see here. So that's the last entry over here. Then I am setting here a default value for that combo box. So that's why upon opening my graphical user interface here, you saw combo box entry one, because I set it as default. And then I can also retrieve what the user selected by calling here the uh, self.cbox, so that's my instance of the combo box class, dot get method. That is more or less useless here at the moment because I'm in the initialization uh, class here, so it's, and that just gives me the default setting that I just put over here. And this is typically what you want to use uh, to trigger something after a user selected um, and uh, selected an entry here that should maybe trigger something. Um, you see something else that resembles a little bit here to the combo box at the very top here of the window, and that is a drop down menu. So the drop down menu is not um, attached here to the grid, it is rather uh, attached here to the menu bar, and to get there, I defined here at the very beginning of that initialization class um, a menu bar. So that is an instance of the tkinter.menu class. I uh, configured it then here. So I, uh, I configured the master window here then uh, with that menu. So I attached here my menu bar to the master window. Then I um, added menu entries here. So that is here the cascade. So here you see first that a drop down menu. So that is that here, that is the cascade. Huh? And here is the menu to which I attached it. Now I also wanted to add some entries or commands that I wanted to, and that should be atta attached to these commands. So here is the label entry number one. So that's drop down entry number one. And that calls again here a function that I called self uh, dot hello. So that's that method over here. And that should just return then again here an info box that has got a message from something here from the top down window in this case. 
So just clicking here should give me that little uh, window here with it. So got a message from the drop down entry. The other widgets that you see here is a list box with a scroll bar. So to get a scroll bar in your window, you uh, need to instantiate a tk.scrollbar uh, class object. Still, again, attach it here to the master window. Um, in that case, you are using the orientation uh, that is vertical, so that makes it um, here with this uh, vertical orientation. Um, well, this was rather here the list box, so that's the scroll bar that you would use here to get along. And then I um, attach to that scroll bar uh, that list box that now holds the entries. So for attaching now the entries or bringing the entries here into that scroll bar, I um, used a loop. So these are the uh, these are the list box entries that I used to scroll along the uh, entries, and now here I am placing the list box again here with that padding on column number zero um, and row uh, number four. Um, that sticky uh, keyword argument here means that it should be to the TK east, so meaning to, uh, it should be attached to the east of the window, sorry, to the east of the window. It makes it attached here to the scroll bar or brings it closer to the uh, scroll bar. Then I am telling here that the, the scroll bar should be attached to the view of my list box. And here that is similar to the combo box again from before, where I'm uh, trying to retrieve, or trying to retrieve, where I'm retrieving here the selected element in the list box. Now some more features here of that um, quite big uh, window is uh, uh, one of them here is the check button so you can tick that button um, and I made it I attach it to a variable here uh, that should be a TK boolean variable so makes sense either it's ticked or not so it's false or true then I instantiate here a TK check button object again attached to the master class um, master window um, I'm putting it here uh, that label text so that's the text that is over here and then I'm assigning here the variable that is self dot check variable then again here I'm using now the grid method to attach it to the window and I'm putting it again I'm orientating it again here to the um, east of the window and the last item that you see featured now here in that uh, little window is uh, that I put here an image, so I defined a logo, and then I placed that here in the uh, in the window here with uh, that logo dot sub sample uh, method. So n that here is then still here that hello function. I made it here. Uh, oh, sorry, method. I made it a static method. Um, why did I do make it a static method? Well, it doesn't actually modify any variable of my class. So I don't need that notion of self here. I just have here my message argument and that will then print the messages from whatever it is called. So if that is coming now from, uh, from a button or from the drop down menu or whatever. And here's just now again that uh, main loop statement that made uh, uh, running my script here now. Now I invite you to play a little bit with these variables. You can also play a little bit maybe here with the geometry. I didn't talk too much in detail now about, about that, but um, that here will define again how uh, wide or high, high your window is and where it is initially opened. So just have a little bit of fun with that little graphical user interface that, by the way, also uses now a different icon, so you don't see here the uh, default uh, TK inter uh, feather anymore. I hope you had fun playing a little bit with my totally overloaded, widget overloaded uh, 
graphical user interface template. And now let's get to tkinter variables. You have already seen one example for a tkinter variable in the um, previous window in the form of the tk.boolean var. So intuitively interpreted that boolean can be true or false. There are other tkinter variables like a double var, that is basically a float, int var, that is an integer then, and a string var, that is a string variable. Let's have a look at how you would use them or how you could use them in a, an application. So in this following code block, I'm importing here again tkinter, if not done yet, and the show info uh, function. And I'm additionally adding here, uh, importing here the random um, library for some random message generation. Everything that you see here in this application is something that you are hopefully familiar with right now. So that is just the instantiation here of the class window, assigning geometry, then putting a label over here, using again here the grid method. So in the very top left of my window, then should be the um, column zero and at row zero. And there should be then the label with the enter a value to call text. Now let's get to the new stuff here in that window. And that is here a string variable that I attach to a user entry. So as before, I'm instantiating here an object of the TK entry class, and I'm attaching it here to the master window. I'm giving it a width, but now I'm also assigning it here a text variable, which is my TK string var that I defined here in the uh, um, self -user, user entry object. Everything else then, placing that entry again in the grid is similar to what I did before. So that little application is actually not only here in the Jupyter uh, lab window, it's also again in the course repository in the GUI subfolder. So you can find it here in the variable underscore GUI dot py script uh, that looks like this. And if you want to call it, you can also do that again here with uh, the anaconda prompt or wh whatever you use basically then here for a terminal. And here I'm just writing again python variable underscore gui dot py calling it and here is my gui. So I can add here now some text or can write now here some text into my entry. So that here is uh, my entry at column number one, row number zero, after the label enter a value to call. Um, now I can just add you some text and can write hello. I will not go to writing hello world, just not. Um, and if I press now the button, that should then be here uh, calling here myself dot message distributor method. So that is this method over here. This method here uses an if else statement that you can see here makes reference to the check variable dot get. So the check variable is that thing here that is, uh, I gave the text label here, check this box to use a random message rather than the entry that I used here. So that's that thing over here. I place it in column zero and at in row number one. One particular item here is that I'm using here the column span. So it should go uh, span the three columns here from the um, label, the entry and the button. So what I did then here in addition is at, as a default, I set the check variable here as a false value. So the check variable is again a TK Boolean variable as in the uh, previous example. Um, it is also assigned here again to the uh, variable uh, keyword of the check button class. And now what happens if 
I'm, if, if I'm clicking here on the button, the code will call the self.messageDistributor me method. If the checkbox is not checked, so it return the TK Boolean variable here is false, it will use my user message. If it is checked, then that means it should um, call the show info uh, window here with a random message. And so that should be the title then. And the text that it should receive should come from the random mess message method that I implemented here in the class. So I just used here um, a list with some words and then I used to from the random uh, library uh, package the uh, sample function um, to which I provide the list here and then it should just select three items from the uh, three entries from this list and join that as a uh, string and return that here to the show info um, function and print that. So if I press now here the button, I will get my hello message. If I check the button, then it will jump here into that class and it should uh, re return then something like a random message. Now you have already seen some options to place widgets in a window or to change the geometry of a window and there are a couple of more design and placing options for wi uh, widgets in the window. So you know already the pack method and the grid method. The pack method automatically places your widgets somewhere in the window. So that is okay if you have a very simple graphical user interface. Um, but if you want to control where your widgets should be placed in the window, that's going to be a little bit tricky. So I would rather not try that. The grid method places then your widgets along uh, something like an array-like grid where you have columns and rows and you can define some padding of where that should be placed. So that is good if you have a table-like um, and structured layout. Then there is an additional option, option that is the place method. So that places widgets in your window as a function of absolute x, y coordinates. There are also other um, option keyword arguments here that you can use when you are instantiating your widgets. Um, that is, for example, here the fg for foreground color or bg for background color keyword. And let's have a look at some of these implementations. So in this example here, you see the place method. So the only one that you have not seen until now for placing widgets in your window. What is uh, or should be very common uh, for you right now until here is the instantiation of the window itself. Also here, um, placing or giving the uh, window a title so I call it just a place GUI. And now here I'm using some more keyword arguments for the label. Just note here that I'm not assigning now any parameter to the label. And for a label that also makes sense because a label is typically something that you do not need to call later on in graphical user interface. So um, making it a variable and then placing the variable somewhere um, is basically an additional line of text that you do not absolutely need in your code. Well, anyways, back here to placing the label. So for placing the label, I am instantiating here the label object. Um, I'm assigning here the first one, just a vanilla text. Now as a background color, I'm using golden rot. So that's this kind of orange thing that you see here. And as a a front color here, um, I'm using the dark slate gray option. So it's a little bit hard to see here. It becomes a little bit more obvious here in the next example. Or oh, better say better, sorry, in the last example here that you see here with the blue sky where I'm using this foreground color floral white. So that's why that is here white and the background here is deep blue sky. Then there's that middle example here with a green, green tree text and the background color of olive drab one, two. 
right? There are many more options of colors, so you see you can um, have fun here with using different colors in the graphical user interface. What is now a little bit particular here about the way I'm placing now the TK labels, so that's actually also the core of the TK place, of that place application here, that is, I'm using now here that place method directly applied to the instantiation of the label class. I'm anchoring it here now in the northwest, so that's placing the anchor up, up here. Now I'm using here a relative x coordinate that is 0 0.2 and a y coordinate that is absolute of 10. So that makes now that my relative coordinate refers to uh, to something between 0 and 1 in the window, and my y coordinate refers to an absolute coordinate. That green green tree um, label here only uses relative x and y, so that makes sure that it is somewhere in the, at, uh, let's say, the 80% x direction and 50% y direction. And then there's my uh, deep blue, uh, uh, my blue sky label that I'm anchoring now in the center and I'm giving it here now an absolute x coordinate of 300 and a relative y coordinate of 0 0.8. So the point here with the anchoring here in that case um, means it's anchored here in the northwest so it's here at 0 0.2 relative x and 10 of the uh, window height. So my window height is 100. Huh? Um, that place here is at x 300. So that's close to the middle of the, uh, of the window. And the relative y is 0 0.8. You have then already seen now other examples already with a grid method. And this is basically just another example where I'm playing again with the background and foreground colors. I let you play now also here with that window. So please uh, just take a minute, maybe stop the video, run that little window here, enter something and uh, play a little bit with the messages here. Once you instantiated a widget as an object of your class, or so as a class attribute, you have also the option to reconfigure it. So what you have seen before when I'm just instantiating a label without assigning it to, an, to a class attribute, that will not be compatible with a reconfiguration because there's no object to which I could apply any reconfiguration. However, if I am assigning an attribute or class attribute to that um, inst instantiated uh, tkinter widget, then I can use the, uh, the dot .configure command to change or modify that widget afterward. Let's have a look here at that next code block where I am now additionally using the show error message from the tkinter message box. Again, that first part of the initialization of the window should be something you are quite familiar with now. Um, probably also you have, um, you will recall the double var that is just the float number from the uh, tkinter variables. Then I am additionally assigning here a self.kst attribute, a self.w attribute, and a self.slope attribute. So the water resources researcher or engineer now will already have a, uh, have a clue where that little reconfiguration app goes towards. What I want to do here is to implement a little estimator for the flow velocity based on a very basic user entry in the form of water depth. This graphical user interface then should reconfigure the style of 
some widget when the calculation is complete. So I'm placing, I'm changing here first again the title of my window, then I'm placing here a label widget where that just asks the user to enter a water depth in that should be numeric and in meters. I'm using again different colors here, powder blue and medium blue. And then I'm using here an entry with the background in Alice blue. And I'm assigning to the entry here the self dot user user depth variable. So that's my double variable from above and should be a float. Huh? Then I am creating here now an attribute uh, or an object of the tk.button class because I want to be able to reconfigure the button. So the button should be named uh, estimate the flow velocity here I'm using as a background color Snow 2 and as a foreground color uh, Dark Violet. I'm attaching to that button the command um, of the self.call estimator method. And then I'm attaching that button to the grid with, uh, uh, sorry, to the window with the grid method. Now let's have a look here at that uh, call estimator method, what, what it does. So it doesn't require any argument again because it will take or it will get its input from the user entered value. It will try to convert the user value here to a float number. So that should be possible because that should be a double var. Huh? If that does not work, it should invoke here and TC or raise a TCL uh, error, tk tcl error, that should then return the show error message box, so that's from here on, with um, the title error and, not, and the text non-numeric error entered. If the method didn't need to return, so stop here because the entry and the value was not numeric, then I want to reconfigure here now the button um, with a new foreground color, so I want to turn it green and in the back in the foreground and in the background dark sea green to indicate that the calculation was a success and I want then to show the result here um, in the form of the calculated uh, flow velocity with the user entered water depth. So it would just call here the self.estimate method that basically uses here that manning strickler function uh, formula to estimate the flow velocity in a very simplified channel. So at the end of this little code block, I just need to call again my reconfigured app with the main loop. I can then run that little box here. It will open up very tiny again. Enter here now a water depth that could be uh, just one meter, whatever, um, and that's then my estimated flow velocity. If I type here um, text, that's a thing that um, should not be allowed, huh? and then I get here correctly my error message from the error box. If you want a little challenge for playing now with other widgets and expanding that estimator for the um, flow velocity based on some cross-section averaged hydraulics, I invite you to address here the challenges and let a user choose a Strickler coefficient or Manning coefficient, whatever you want. Um, let your functions also calculate a hydraulic radius based on a user-defined channel width and bank slope m. Then let's get to another uh, section here from, for the GUI creation and these are pop-up windows. You have seen already a couple of examples that I imported here from the tkinter message box. You have seen the show info and the show error. Um, pop-up windows. 
There are others, as I mentioned already, like the ask yes or no. Then there's also ask retry or cancel. There's a show warning message box and uh, ask okay cancel message box. These predefined show info, show error, show warning message boxes are useful for creating a quick user message pop-up window, but sometimes you want to tailor your pop-up window a little bit more. For doing that, you can create a, another window, another pop-up window with the tk.toplevel class. And let's have a look here at an example how you can implement that in an application. So in this code block here, I will also use the show warning message box. Um, everything that you see in the initialization until here should be uh, very, uh, or should look very familiar to you. Also here, the usage of uh, the button and assigning a title to the master window should look very familiar to you now. My button here uh, will call the self.new window, so the um, pop-up window. The new pop-up window then will contain another button here and will offer you to call to another uh, to call another uh, class method that is self.destroy buttons. To run that little window here, you can just do it like that and it will look then here very tight uh, to the window. Now you can open here the pop-up window that you can then also uh, destroy or just close. Now my Python hangs a bit. If you want to play a little bit further with that uh, little application, please do so and have a look at how the show warning uh, message from Python features your own warning message. If your code requires a certain input file, type, file name, you can also ask users to select a file. And that is, can, can be done with a file dialog from Tkinter. You can get uh, and the ask open file name pop up window from the tkinter.file dialog library. And here's an example that features how you can do it, how, how you can implement that into a graphical user interface. Here again, I am instantiating a new um, application window. This time I call the class uh, open file application. Yeah, that's the name of the game. Huh? I'm assigning here a button that I will get and give uh, that will attach to the function self.openfile, which makes sense. And now here in that open file method is what is new and relevant here for that application. First here I'm defining a variable that is file types. And this is a little trick here just to make the file dialog search box look for only the file types that are useful for my function. So if I want the user to select only a txt, csv or ascii file because those are the only formats that my method can process or my code can process, then I can do that by indicating here with that double tuple um, um, variable that the type should be text, txt, csv, or ascii. I'm implementing that file types parameter uh, variable now in the ask open file name function that I imported here. And the way I'm implementing it here, I am, I am providing it here as an argument to the optional file types keyword argument from the ask open file name function. This function also uh, accepts other uh, keyword arguments like the initial directory 
um, the dot that I'm using here means start from the very beginning on where you are. You can also choose something more precise here, maybe relative to your code. Then I will ask here a user to select a text file, so that should be the title of that box. And then what is important here is to tell that ask open finem that the, its parent is my own window here. Once the selection process is finished, I want to inform the user, okay, got you, I defined, I found your file. So now if you want to uh, check that out, just run that code block here. I am still running the uh, previous code block, so I need to finish that first. And then I will get here the new graphical user interface um, to open a text file that asks me now here to get a text file from my uh, current directory. So it's because I it's, um, defined here the dot, so the current directory, um, for selecting a text file. So I didn't select anything, it will just return me that empty message. So now before we quit this tutorial, one hint here, uh, one more hint here, and instead of just um, forcing user to use that little cross in the top right of the window, there is a um, built a method of the t, uh, tk frame class that is self.quit or tk frame.quit that you can use to quit your window. Finally, there are also other options here that you can implement in your application for plotting, um, so more graphical rendering or implementing tables and so on that are particularly, um, or uh, that you can retrieve, for instance, through the TTK um, library of uh, tkinter. That's it for that introduction to graphical user interfaces with tkinter and we have another exercise here so if you click on that link you uh, can um, foster your knowledge about graphical user interfaces with this exercise. Thanks for watching this tutorial.